why do you feel passionately about n- people not taking massive risks and in, and in, in starting a business? Well, here's the thing. All of these magazines and YouTube videos and documentaries and books that do well in the world, they talk about people like Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg that burn the ships behind them. And they fetishize this massive risk of jumping out of an airplane and figuring out if they've even got a parachute on the way down. (laughs) And people think that's the only thing that they can possibly do. But that is such a risky thing for people to get through their head that they could possibly do that, that nobody ever takes those risks because it is a risky thing when they say like, oh, I'm just going to give up my income and hopefully figure something out. Nobody's going to take those risks, rightfully so. So when I go in the few times that I get asked to speak at uh, my university that I went to, they don't like that I say this because it isn't the sexy thing to say. I say like, start your business when you have another career. Start your business when you have backup. Gradually work your way into actually making it your career because then you can make decisions that aren't that risky, that aren't going to financially ruin you, that aren't going to cause you to have to monetize something sooner and scratch and claw for a few dollars here and a few dollars there before you actually grow any sort of audience. So having, in our case, three and a half years where I didn't need to make income from our audience, I was able to spend a lot of time figuring out what do they actually like? What do they need? What do I stand for? What products can I be good at actually making? What can I offer to the world? But if I had left a career or actually even thought, all right, well, I'm going to quit and make a career out of triathlon (laughs) right away. Well, A, it wouldn't have happened. I would have been successful. So I probably wouldn't have made that leap. And then B, I would have started trying to monetize something, boom, right from day one. And my audience now you're would desperate. Been like, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, Taryn, you're sounding a little desperate here. <laughs> um, you just came out of nowhere. Why should we buy from you? So I really believe that it needs to be a much more gradual approach than people give credit for because it's not sexy to talk about the person like me that was like, yeah, I basically did it for fun for three and a half years. So let's say let's say that someone does want to amass a following, whether it's for a personal brand, you know, like you started out, or whether maybe they're going backwards. Maybe they already have a business and they're like, man, if I had, you know, 500,000 followers, I'd be able to sell a lot more stuff. And they, they're going backwards from, you know, kind of the, the path that you had chosen to take. Either way, if someone's wanting to start to amass a following, you had mentioned to that you stuck to a niche and you had talked about that before about sticking to a niche. Why do you think that someone should do that instead of, don't you think that you would get more YouTube views and you would get more, you know, hits online if you speak to a generic audience more than niche or why, why do you say that somebody should do that? It's important for people to know what you stand for and why they should care. So let's say I started out as health and fitness Taryn. Sure. Like <laughs> huge niche, like 4 billion people in the developed world care about health, health and fitness. Like, <laughs> let's just pick that as a number and assume that a good chunk of the world is more concerned with like where their next meal is as opposed to health and fitness. <laughs> so let's just say it's 4 billion. Great, huge audience, but why would anyone subscribe to health and fitness, Taryn, just talking about general health and fitness? Eh, I, I don't know. Maybe it would work. But if I become triathlon Taryn and focus on the 400,000 new triathletes every single year and very openly say, we're talking about triathlon, we are talking about helping beginners in triathlon, even narrowing it down more, talking with triathletes who don't have a background in endurance sports narrow it down even more, all of a sudden our content gets really easy to produce because we just say, what do these people need? What are the answers that currently aren't, or what are the questions that currently aren't answered out there right now? And then just say that. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, hey, Taryn's my guy because that's what I'm looking for with my information. And what we're doing right now is six and a half years later, we are starting to broaden out, but it's still just more into 
in beginners in overall endurance sports. I'm not going into general health and fitness. Huh. Um, so it becomes easier to get, it's called a beachhead in, in marketing terms. You, it's easier to get your, your self established if you go hyper focused and then broaden out from there, as opposed to broaden out and really stand for nothing. Yeah, that's a great point. 